Hello everyone and welcome to my next reaction to Invincible. So I am very worried for everyone and I am also very glad that Rex went and got Eve for the mission because if Eve wasn't up in space right now, genuinely uh, things would have been a lot worse. It is already not a great situation, but they, they would have been worse. Um, and you know, in the last reaction, I really went on a journey. I went on a journey of accepting my love for Rex just to have it all hang in the balance at the end of the last episode, and I do not appreciate it, not one bit. Not one bit. So I hope that Rex is going to be okay, but um, yeah, without further ado, let's just find out what's going to happen. Bug. Okay. <sighs> Just do it, you prick. Ah, no! 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 Oh, I'm so mad about that! I am so mad! Okay, okay, focus. Oh, wow! Okay, Almost okay. Almost! Oh no. Oh Look shit. I'm not as strong as he, but I can keep them away for a few minutes. Oh wow. Okay, <laughs> Tickles. Chase me? Please, hurry! Okay. Get this close to us and then press the button. Okay, okay, we can do it, we can do it. Sorry, give it to me! Woo! How dare you! Stop it! I'm stronger and faster than you, and you know it! Don't fail. Cover me! Oh, okay, yes, cover him. Let's work together. Okay, okay. There we go, there we go. Oh, gotcha. Yes. Hell yes, we did it. Did you? Okay. We told you we were. Oh, no! No, 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 no. Okay, working together. You okay? Yeah. Oh my goodness. I'm just happy to be me again. Where am I? We'll explain later. Oh. Oh, the kinds of death. I am so yes, mad. Ten. Agree to my demands, and I will consider not destroying. Half of the nation! <gasps> Shut up! Uh, what? What? <laughs> you are kidding me! Seems like the loss of your brain hasn't hurt you as much as one would expect. <laughs> oh my, how sad. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Oh, I said, shut up! Ah, let's go! Let's go! Oh my goodness, I am so fucking happy right now. That's a weird question. I'm yeah, fine. babe. Totally good. Let's let's uh -huh. get you to a hospital. Then we're better. You know me. I'm practically. Ah! <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! I'm so happy. Love. Oh. We need... Okay. Sure. Okay. This guy to an OR now. Yes. Get a stretcher over here. Holy. <gasps> Shut the front door. Shut the front door right now. Oh, 
Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, I am going through so many emotions. Uh, look, we gotta go. But we cannot permit you to leave with the great betrayer. Oh. Uh, me? This is all you're doing. You must remain here for punishment. What kind of punishment? Death. I understand. Oh my goodness! I mean, I don't blame them. It, it is his fault, but um, he did come in clutch. Okay, they all have like suits on. And <laughs> I don't even think it's like it's Mark killing all of them. Thanks. Jeez. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, got it. I trained with the best, right? <laughs> uh -oh. I, good work. Okay, a step, a Thanks. step. You too. It was unpleasant having my mind under Setwood control. And being out of my armor was extremely stressful. Thankfully, I was able to control my fear response this time. I changed myself, fixed the problem. I yeah, can you do did the good. Same for right, because a top secret government lab is the perfect place to raise a child. We paint clouds on the ceiling. <laughs> Look, oh, well, in that case. You through, no the truth is, Cecil, this isn't about Nolan or me. It's about Mark. This child is Mark's brother, his only Debbie. brother, which makes him family to me too. Debbie. Yeah. And let me remind you that I raised Mark, who just saved the world. All right, you win. But we're here if you need us, and I expect to be kept in the loop. Mm. It's nap time. I was thinking Welcome at the end of the last Captain episode, Livingston. like... Can I go home? I just want to go home. Don't sleep. Oh, I do feel they very bad for him. Let me sleep. But like, she is one of the few people who has raised to have Viltrumite. Oh. Oh, I got it. I still can't believe Rex survived a bullet through the head, like. Good job, Oliver. Oliver? Mark. Oliver. Bra-bra. Bra-bra, not bra-bra, Oh. Kate Chaw was a fearless warrior. Though her powers came from a family curse, she believed they were a gift to help those around her. Kate Chaw was a kindred soul. I'm glad it didn't rain. Kate hated the rain. Oh, wow. Why do I feel this way, Marcus? Because you loved her, man. I loved many others before Kate. All of them died as well. But this, this is different. Well, the way she died was quite horrific. I we had more time together. Just a beautiful moment between the king and Aaron. <laughs> right? That's Carrie and Ross, I think. Well, how's your new brother? Is he adjusting? Is your mom losing her mind yet? My mom's still getting used to chewing his food for him, though. Um, she chews his food? Yeah. It, it turns out Thraxan babies don't have enzymes to break down solid food. Wow. Okay, can I just say this feels like a first date? Yeah, a bad first date. I missed you. I missed you too. I really thought college would be different. We hang out less than we did before we went to college. Whenever my friends here ask where you are, I'm always like, oh, Mark's studying for an exam, or he went home for the weekend. I hate lying to them, Mark. It's our first year of college, oh. our first time living on our own, and it feels like we're missing it. 
You know, sometimes I wish I never got powers. Then I could just be with you. But you do have powers. And that means you have an obligation to make the world a better place. And if you didn't feel that way, we wouldn't be dating to begin with. Oh. Mark, look who's back! Whoa, <gasps> Rick! Oh! How are you feeling? Doctors gave him a clean bill of health. Donald says he can come back to Upstate, right? I'm here to help facilitate his transition. If there's anything I can do, just call me. That is so kind. Thank you. Oh my wow, goodness. Rick looks exactly the same. It's like wow. nothing happened. He went through intensive body reconstruction. That kind of trauma can resurface. Oh. Are you okay? Oh. Tell William I'll check in later to see how Rick's doing. Uh, okay. Well, you look like shit. And that's coming from a guy that looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting a new hand too. Oh, yeah. I was such a dick to Kate, mm. to Eve too, to every woman I've ever dated. I don't know why I had to get my brains blown out to see that. What is it about being a superhero, where we go around saving lives while ruining them at the same time? All right, let's hear it. Hear what? Uh, the reason your face looks all like that. Uh, I don't know. You know, sad and shit. <laughs> sad and shit. Oh, these, uh, um, turns out Rex really likes home decorating magazines. <gasps> I think it's because he's never really had a home. Aww. I haven't seen you since Kate's funeral. Oh, Are you Rex. okay, Mark? I'm fine. <laughs> anyway, I, I, I gotta run, so I'll, I'll see you around. Hi. Rex is into Eve. interior aesthetics. A bearer of spring colors and waterfall countertops. <sighs> this man is You're becoming the very endearing to me. He still reads magazines. I just ran into Mark. And Ugh, I know, right? He and Amber are. <clears throat> Wait, what does that mean? Oh, 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 oh. Ten best bedroom makeovers? Uh, yes, please. <laughs> so, Helga, you've I been a nanny him. for 30 years. So you know that Oliver is half Thraxen, half Veltramite. I also know that Nolan Grayson, or Omni Man, is Oliver's father, and that your son Mark, also invincible, is Oliver's half brother. I appreciate your honesty, April. But I don't want a GDA agent in my house running interference for Cecil on how to raise Oliver. I work for you, Miss Grayson, not Cecil. Period. You're the boss. Not okay. Him. Not my boss. <laughs> <laughs> See? Um, yes, Debbie is mama boss. Mama boss. Mama boss. Real nice place you made here, Eve. Oh my word, you are everywhere. <laughs> I'm still figuring out what kind of hero I want to be, and that's not the kind of person you need on the Guardians. But you know how to find me if you need my help again. And you know where to find me when you change your mind. Thanks yeah, your literally back. anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> what guest? Amber? Your place really blends in with the trees. That obvious, huh? It's all over your face, kid. Pull up a chair. And I, I love Amber, and I want to be with her, but it, it feels like the universe is conspiring against us. Ugh, it doesn't matter if you're a superhero or an ordinary Joe. Relationships aren't easy. You no, know, we've known each other for years. It just kind of made sense. And, and it was good for a while, until I finally had enough of him cheating on me every time he left the tower. Yeah. It was the lying that hurt more. Mark puts himself on the line for people he doesn't even know, and that takes real- Guts to not care what anyone else thinks, you know? And Amber always does the right thing. It's inspiring. She makes me a better person. A real catch. The problem is, I'm- Invincible. Whether it's a tsunami or some psycho with rocket launchers for arms, when bad things happen, Mark has to drop everything and go. 
Yeah. I don't care when Mark cancels our date or forgets to text. I mean, he's saving the world. It's, it's not that. It's that it makes me feel like a... Jerk. Because I'm doing exactly to her what my dad did to me and my mom. But oh. we never complained because A, it made us feel like assholes, and B, we didn't want to distract Ted from saving the world. When we're together, I feel guilty. Like I'm taking him away from people who really need him. Oh. Mark needs some... I knew dating Mark would be difficult. I just didn't know it would be so lonely. I feel like, like I'm failing Mark. Oh. You're not saving the world right now. Why, Why are, you are you here talking, talking to me when, when you should be talking, talking to, to him? Go home, yeah. Mark. Go home and be with your girlfriend. Thanks for listening, Art. Oh. Hey, even after everything you did, I didn't realize how much I missed him. Maybe that makes me a bad person or something. It makes you human. Yeah. And then the last thing he told me before the Viltrumites took him away wasn't, I love you. It was, read my books. I got his travel books from the library, but nothing popped out. No one wrote more than just travel books. What? He wrote sci-fi novels under a pen name when you were a kid. None of them sold right, so he gave it up. Oh! He gave Hate tribes on the planet wreck? I told Bo Okay. Oh, great. Commemorates D.A. Sinclair's uh, victims. Victims? You're the only one who uh, recovered. Oh. You hungry? <laughs> D.A. Sinclair took so much of me away. I don't think they found it all. Who am I if I can't even remember what I'm missing? Rick, I'm so sorry. Oh. It's going to be all right. I promise. We'll get through this together. I will say it's um really good that William is the person that the Rick is with, with gun. when going through this because he Judge is him, very... Man. Genuinely, little was known about the space rider, the stuff of and legends, empathetic. the infinity ray. Oh, it was said to emit an unstoppable energy wave that destroyed anything in its path. Wow. The Infinity Ray is indeed real. Damn! And as powerful as the stories claim, it poses a huge threat to our mission. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm listening. <laughs> Savage Planet. After finding no usable resources, my partner and I were ready to return home. Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> In an instant, I was surrounded, swarmed, overwhelmed. Uh huh. But because of the gravity on this planet, Ragnars had evolved strength like no other. <gasps> oh, I'm, I'm listening. <laughs> Again. What do you want, Cecil? <sighs> Bermuda. I hear it's lovely this time of year. What are you talking about? Was that like Tahiti? And since you refuse to see our specialist. I don't need your pinheads! Poking around my brain! Kate's death was difficult for everyone. But I need you. I said I'm fine! Okay, okay. I what? Do. Send it here. Sweetie, I don't know that I believe that. What is that? Someone's coming in hot from deep space. Omni oh, Man. No. No, 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 no. Love. Love. No, 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 no. Oh, boy. Ah! Alan! Oh, no. Oh, where did Invincible Sea live again? Oh, why did you go whoop and I look Chill! Think chill! I misunderstand me. Only man sent you! Uh, it's you the hell out! Uh, I do not want to hurt you, sir! Oh! Uh, I'll kill you! We just met! <laughs> we just. Oh! Oh, okay. What the hell is going on? Alan's my friend. He's a good guy. My thing only works between me and someone else, not between two other someone else's. It's a design flaw. I, I'm told oh. there's not big. Okay. Right. 
Hi, sir. Mark says I'm a pal. He also says I'm essentially the king of space, uh, so you should be very nice to me. Also, <laughs> he says he hates your diet because it's missing all the best. Did Alan attack you or threaten you? Oh, good question. Mark wants to know if I attacked you or threatened you, which I totally didn't because <laughs> you just charged up here and attacked me. Yeah. Not very heroic of you. A, a little bit, yeah. Earth. I thought you were someone else. Oh, all right. Right. Well, that guy's problem. His girlfriend just died. Well, now I feel like a giant douchebag. <laughs> right? We keep making that reference. And also, for future reference, will you just point to where you live? The immortal needs some CBD oil stat. <laughs> a lot of it. Oh. The rift is starting. You know what, my planet? Sock on the door means somebody's fucking. Yeah, it's the same here. <laughs> About my dad. They took him away. Said they're gonna execute him if they haven't already. Um, that is, wow. That is quite the story. Yeah. Do you think my dad's dead? I don't know. Why are you here exactly? Oh, yes, right. Of course. <clears throat> On behalf of Thetis and the Coalition of Planets, I am to escort you to Telesria to discuss our war against the Biltrum Empire and how you can help. Oh. Grab your stuff, Mark. That's nice. You got a boogie. I'm not going back just to talk to your boss. This could be our chance to end Viltrumite tyranny for good. Isn't that what you want? Of course. Amber and I are in a weird place. And now that my mom's looking after my half-brother, I can't uh... just ditch her. Are we going to have to fight now? Nah, I don't fight friends. Because I would win, and you know, I feel terrible. It's a... <laughs> sure. I should get okay. going. Thetis will... Hey, is that Space Racer? But it's Space Rider in the book. It's Space Racer in real life, and he is legendary, mm -hmm. and that no one is sure if he's real or not. And it's all stuff that can hurt Viltrumites. That's why my dad wanted me to read his books. He's telling us how to defeat the Empire. Yep. Shit. Can I, uh, can I scan to get back to the Coalition? And I'm very sorry about your father's impending or already completed execution. Yes. Uh, right. Thanks. For rumors of a Viltrumite prison somewhere in space, maybe they took him there. Want me to ask around? I'd appreciate that. Aww. When you need someone for the actual fight, I'll be there. Oh, Jimmy. Mark! Ugh. Okay. There is a path to redemption. Rejoin your people, Nolan. Let this not be your legacy. Oh, my word. You were one of our greatest warriors. How did a mere moment on Earth turn you into a weak, sentimental traitor? Ooh. You don't answer me! That planet and its people are toxic if they could do this to you. They too will pay. Oh shit. Oh shit. <coughs> <coughs> what the f you have got with this nonsense! With this nonsense! I really feel bad for him. I mean, obviously. But, uh, nonsense! Nonsense. Oh, my word. Okay. May I ask, sir, what's the occasion for such a fine suit? Oh. I'm visiting an old friend. Up. Oh, here. Uh, it is good to be home. <laughs> Woo! Well, guys, what an episode. There is a lot to talk about. Okay, right off the bat, I want to talk about the fight in space. Um, oh my goodness. You know what I loved about that fight? 
it felt like one of the first times, and I won't say the first time or anything like that, but it felt like we're all of these heroes, where these guardians were really doing their best to work together and look at each other's strengths and really almost defer to who is better suited for what part of this mission as hectic as it got. You know, obviously the biggest example of that being, um, you know, the immortal kind of accepting the fact that Mark is probably stronger, he has a better chance of succeeding, so you cover him. And I liked that moment a lot, you know, obviously the immortal has, well, he's got issues. He's got issues, but um, he definitely has trust issues um, with Mark, obviously mainly because of Nolan, but you know, uh, I'm, I'm quite happy that turned out the way it was. I like the fact that Shapesmith did come in clutch um, and, you know, uh, especially because of the fact that, you know, it, it very technically is his fault that this whole thing is a situation in the first place. Um, and, uh, and it's still going to be a situation apparently with, a, a, you know, that ending and everything. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Can't wait. Um, and I feel very bad for Russ, th this astronaut. I feel so, so, so bad. Okay. Um, and then talking about the fight back on Earth. You know, first of all, I just want to say one R.I.P. Kate, but also really shocked that Ray made it. Was not expecting that at all. So, well, I feel like she has a long recovery ahead of her. And man, you know, I really got put through the ringer with my emotions in regards to Rex in The Last Reaction. You know, I was coming to terms with the fact I was like, you know what, I think he's a top character for me in this show. And I just need to accept that. And I just need to accept the fact that he is also a giant douchebag. <laughs> and it is what it is at this point. And, um, you know, I was worried coming into this reaction. I was worried because I genuinely was like, whoo, you know, um, Invincible is absolutely the type of show to end a episode with a cliffhanger with a gun to Rex's head and then open the next episode with him getting shot. And they did that. And they did that. And I was so mad. I, I literally had to tell myself when they panned to the other fight in Spas, I was like, okay, okay. You have to focus on this. You have to focus on this. You care about these characters. You have to, because I, I was just, I was so upset. I was so upset. Even though I knew it was a possibility, I was so upset that they did that. And you know what I thought to myself? I said, man, this show just got a lot less funnier. <laughs> that was my internal monologue. Uh, but my goodness, the way that I just cannot believe, I cannot believe he may, I just, I, 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 the, the joy I felt throughout that scene to see that he wasn't taken out and that I think he, he killed most of the lizard league that attacked right? I think he did. He, I, he did work. Okay. He earned his paycheck. All right. And listen, just knowing and you know, I, I, there was the mention in, I think, the, the previous episode where he was like, I was living in your room and your parents didn't even know for however long. So you could kind of tell that he really didn't have a home of his own or anything. I don't know if we're going to dive into that at any point in time, but you know, um, so obviously he has a, a, maybe a love for homes because he, he never really got the time to spend in one or you know, have that identity of decorating your own space or whatever. So I, I think that that's really interesting um, and a, a, just a very interesting note on his character. But I'm also just really into the fact that he, he's really into 
aesthetics. <laughs> oh my goodness. I just, I love that. I love that. Um, yeah, I, I love, um, I don't like live for interior decorating, but I do try to make uh, like all of the, the space that I live in and the space that I work in and everything kind of very, um, nice. And so anyway, I appreciated that. All right. Um, Debbie, amazing as always. Okay. This woman who is interviewing to take care of Oliver. I feel like it could go one of two ways. We have option A. She is being genuinely honest. Um, and I guess kind of considerate and laying it all out there. Or she is just trying to get into Debbie's good graces and she's still shady, shady, shady. It really could be either way. I'm just skeptical. I'm skeptical. Um, you know, uh, Again, I don't know that they're going to focus on this so much, but you guys know that I love William and I do think that, um, I hope that we get a little bit of focus on him and Rick in the last two episodes of the season. I know there's so much to cover, so I mean, I get it that if they wouldn't or whatever, but I do think that William is a great empathetic person who may not entirely understand everything that Rick is going through, but he's a good, I feel like he's a great sounding board and a great listener um, for, for kind of venting. And I, listen, Rick has been through severe trauma and you don't just forget about it and you don't just move on from it. You have to, I feel like, go through a lot in order to accept everything that happened to you and then try to move forward with the fact that you have, you have changed as a person because of this unfortunately very terrible thing that's happened to you. And I feel like William is a good person to be around while someone is going through that. He's been great for Mark. I think he will be wonderful for Rick as well. Um, again, I don't know that they're going to really focus on that in the last two episodes, but I kind of hope they do. All right. Uh, moving on to Mark and Amber. Oh my goodness. Okay. They are, I feel like the prime example of like right feelings, wrong time, or right feelings, wrong situation. And as I said, you know what I loved that they focused on? Was Mark saying it from the perspective of, of his father, kind of always leaving, and then, you know, Amber talking about the perspective of, of Mark. And being like, it's like I want more time with them, but then you feel like an asshole whenever you say that or whenever you would complain or something like that. I'm a very true believer that every single person, particularly in relationships or romantic relationships, operates very differently and has different specific needs. We all need to be fulfilled, like, you know, emotionally in some way, but that looks very different for every single person. And I think there is an element, particularly with Amber, who really needs, she's going through a big experience. No, it's not necessarily earth shattering or, you know, millions of lives hang in the balance or anything like that, but she's going through a very big experience right now. She's figuring out who she is. She's figuring out what her purpose should be. And, and in, you know, Mark kind of already knows what at least sort of his, his life trajectory is going to look like when it comes to, uh, you know, um, he has a purpose of saving people. Okay, he may not know specifics of, you know, where his life is going to go and, and there's, a, there's a lot going on and a lot he needs to prep for, all of that. But she, I feel like, is actually trying to figure out and navigate it. And I think she wants somebody to help navigate that with her and to relate to her on that journey. And I believe they care for each other. I believe they love each other. I believe all of that. But I think... What needs to happen and is, is for both of them to be very honest with themselves and literally say, 
what do I want in a romantic relationship? What are the, you know, a few biggest things that I need to feel fulfilled? And does this person meet that? And, um, you know, I think maybe that's slightly more from Amber's perspective, but it's also, you know, um, well, I feel like Mark can also think about that as well, but I think, you know, Mark needs to also, I think they both need to get together. I think they need to talk and logically look at their situation and just be honest about how often do we think Mark will be away? You know, um, how often will we have to deal with this? And um, I think it's it's very, very important for Mark to also maybe accept the fact that he, no matter how much he wants Amber to be a top priority, she almost possibly can't be because he has protecting the world up there and this big Viltrumite fight coming up and all of this stuff. Anyway, I think, um, long story short, sorry I rambled a bit, but I feel like they just really need to take a look at what they want and if they think the other can fulfill that and kind of have a little more analytical look at the relationship. Because I don't think emotions are the problem. I don't think feelings are the problem. I don't think love is the problem. I think that's all there. That box checked. You know what I mean? Anyway, that's how I feel about that. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think if there is anything else. Um, I'm very interested about the books. Um, I'm very interested to hopefully follow Alan maybe a little bit in these last two episodes. There's a, there's a lot going on. We really have a, a lot of things in motion right now and I am quite curious. We only have two episodes left and I feel like there's a lot to cover, but um, I'm, I'm just enjoying the show and enjoying the ride. So, you know, there's that. Uh, I think that is about it. I do apologize if there is something that I um, didn't talk about that you wanted me to, but uh, I'm really excited for the last two episodes. Um, and I'm just, listen, I'm just happy. I can end this reaction saying I'm happy that Rex can take a bullet to the fucking head and get up and still do work. Okay? All right. <laughs> if you would like to support me on Patreon or subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. But if not, I'm just happy that you were here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.